Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cardiac Wire Show. My name is Jake Fishman. I'm the host of the show and the editor of the Cardiac Wire, and we have a great episode for you all today. Uh, we're going to be talking about advanced cardiac imaging and its use in diagnostics and preoperative planning, and we have really the, the perfect person on to talk about these topics. Dr. Christopher Morales, who is a cardiac imager and leader in this space. Welcome to the show, Dr. Morales. Uh, before we get started or to get us started, please just give us a little background on yourself and and your organizations sure thanks jake it's a it's a pleasure to be here so i am a, a co-founder and chief operating officer of innovation health services and i also serve as a director of cardiac imaging for simon men imaging yeah those are two big names in the in the space for sure can you can you give me a feel for your cardiac imaging operations and your workflows today yeah, absolutely. Um, they're a little different between Innovation Health Services and Simon Med Imaging. I'll start with IHS. So IHS is a national team of, of cardiac radiologists and imaging cardiologists. We provide uh, cardiac imaging support to health systems, hospitals all throughout the country, as well as a number of different private practices. And so, you know, we're involved in high volume cardiac CT, high volume cardiac MRI, and then as well as PET CT and other thoracic imaging, you know, needs. We serve both the outpatient market, inpatient, um, as well as acute ED studies. And, you know, we've got imagers sort of scattered all throughout the U.S. Um, we're a team of over 50 now. We've got, we've got imagers in the West Coast, East Coast, and everywhere in between. We all read and interpret studies from a centralized clinical portal that uh, we designed ourselves, we call it Vivian. And within that portal, we have a number of different tools for uh, advanced visualization, reporting, things like that, including obviously Terra Recon and the, uh, the Aquarius viewer. With Simon Med, Simon Med is one of the largest outpatient radiology practices in the U.S., a large number of radiologists, very large number of uh, outpatient imaging centers that are owned by Simon Med. We have a growing team of cardiac radiologists uh, with, within Simon Med, and they interpret a, a very high number of outpatient cardiac CT and MRI exams on a daily basis. With Simon Med, we, we all interpret studies from a centralized PACS, and then we have all of our imagers access to, you know, thin clients, um, advanced visualization solutions such as uh, Terra Recon. So slightly different, but a lot of similarities as well. All right. So you mentioned Terra Recon. How long have you been working uh, with their solutions and, you know, how to use Terra Recon to support your workflows? Honestly, Jake, I've, I trained on Terra Recon back in 2016 when I was at UT Southwestern uh, working with uh, Dr. Sonny Ibarra. I've been around Terra Recon ever since I started in cardiac imaging. I absolutely love it. I think what, what draws a lot of people to it is just its ease of use. So we, we use it as really a primary tool for um, cardiac CT analysis, uh, both now at IHS and Simon Med Imaging. With IHS, another component of our practice is that uh, we run a, um, a level two cardi uh, cardiac CT level two training course that's directed by um, our president, Dr. Mo Bassine. And we use Terra Recon exclusively for that training program. We found that uh, trainees gravitate naturally towards Terra Recon. They, they highly prefer it um, over other solutions. And so um, we've stuck with that since, you know, 2006 when we launched the course and uh, has since trained over a thousand imagers using Terra Recon. I think over the, over the years, we've kind of extended that use, you know, now doing a lot more structural heart imaging with CT, TAVR workups, you know, uh, now uh, transcatheter mitral valve workups, electrophysiology planning, you know, workups, and, and, and then even more recently, you know, cardiac MRI as a, as a solution for post-processing. So you mentioned CT early on, and that's it's had a big week or a big couple of weeks with that, that reimbursement increase. Can you maybe go a little bit deeper into the importance of CT for diagnostics and also the role of this new uh, doubled reimbursement that it'll have on utilization, you think? 
Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been a huge week, you know, for cardiac CT. A lot of a lot of happy uh, cardiac imagers out there right now, for sure. As far as like you know the the use, you know how how we use you know advanced visualization, post processing. I mean, it's it's expanding, you know, by the by the month. It seems, you know, historically, you know, coronary CT and geography. Obviously, we use advanced visualization to to segment out the coronary arteries to measure stenosis severity, to quantify plaque burden. Um, you know, I think originally we used it to quantify coronary calcium burden, but now that has extended far beyond, you know, just uh, routine, you know, basic coronary angiography and, and we're using it for, you know, structural heart assessments. So I mentioned TAVR earlier, uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement workups, CT has really become sort of the centerpiece of that workup for prosthetic valve sizing, for determining patency of the peripheral arteries, and uh, and really trying to identify patients who are at high risk from uh, that type of procedure and who may be better candidates for surgical aortic valve replacement. Now you've we've also seen an emergence of transcatheter mitral valve, you know, uh, replacements, and so we're also using CT with advanced visualization for that purpose as well structural heart evaluations to look for anatomy of the left atrial appendage, uh, pre and post closure now with uh, Watchman devices, amulet devices to look for anatomy of the left atrial appendage, as well as um, any um, post-procedural complications that will put the patient at higher risk. And and now, you know, MRI, I mentioned MRI. This is an exciting area that uh, Terra Recon has ventured into. You know, advanced visualization, obviously a, a critical role in uh, helping us interpret these exams, quantifying, you know, volumes, function, and, uh, you know, estimating scar burden and, uh, and really trying to take a very complex data set and distill it down into more simple terms efficiently, you know, as uh, the volumes for these imaging studies creep up. Now you mentioned the reimbursements. I mean, this this is really exciting stuff, and I think it's it's really sort of uh, the culmination of a lot of work that uh, we've been we've been pushing for in um, in our advocacy groups for some time now. You know, if you look back over the last five years, we've seen you know some very powerful tailwinds for cardiac CT, and and really this is just you know a natural evolution i think of just the enormous positive data um you know the uh, the evidence base for for cardiac ct uh, has just become so rich and it's it's crystal clear that there's value here with this imaging study in 2021 we saw acc you know recognize cardiac ct as a sort of a first line level 1 indication for chest pain that was a big step um, we've seen the emergence of CT fractional flow reserve. It's now also a guideline-based strategy for uh, quantifying, you know, the functional significance of a stenosis, you know, straight from a, a CT data set. That's amazing. Um, that's gained a lot of traction. AI, you know, flat quantification tools have, have also emerged recently. Those are now being reimbursed by CMS and commercial payers. And, and then, you know, you just mentioned, you know, just last week, CMS reclassified, you know, coronary CT angiography into a new payment category or an APC, which will effectively double its reimbursement in the uh, the hospital outpatient uh, setting. And, you know, I think that uh, this is only going to make it more attractive. And I think, you know, as a cardiac imager, it, it has just blown my mind how slow, uh, you know, uh, CMS and commercial payers were to sort of adopt this. And now, now to see sort of like, you know, this, this avalanche of support, I think it's just fantastic. So uh, I think we're all very excited about the future. Right. Absolutely. And it's, like you said, it's a, it's a modality or, or exam that has, you know, been growing even despite this, this, uh, lower than probably advised, uh, reimbursement up until now. So that says a lot about what we can expect. You did just mention AI and of course. You know, good for us for making it this far into the conversation without mentioning AI before. Um, but can you give me a feel for for the AI that you're using today and how you expect to be using it in the future? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's becoming you know more 
routine in our, our day-to-day workflows. Um, you, you've seen, you know, the emergence of a number of AI companies and in, in healthcare and specifically in cardiac imaging. And I think it's really exciting. Obviously, you know, AI driven fractional flow reserve, FFRCT, you know, to evaluate for lesion specific ischemia that has, you know, now worked its way into the guidelines. It's recognized in the, in the, in the 2021 ACC guidelines for chest pain. You know, more recently, the AI-driven plaque, you know, quantification and segmentation with CT, we're using that now on a pretty regular basis to assess cardiovascular risk and uh, as well as, you know, uh, an individual's response to therapy. And I think that's that's really kind of helping us guide tailored therapeutics and uh, and really sort of offer personalized diagnostics and therapeutics, you know, and only possible with with CT and this advanced uh, you know quantification uh, tool sets. Also, you know, with uh, MRI in particular, auto contouring now, and you know uh, some of the segmentation tools that are AI powered to allow an imager to take a very large data set and uh, and and process it and uh, quantify ventricular volumes and function with ease without having to spend 30 minutes, you know, uh, manually drawing these circles around the, <laughs> the endocardial surface of the, uh, of the left ventricle. I had to do that, unfortunately, as a fellow, and I can just tell you, it's extremely painful and it's not practical. And I think it's been a, a hindrance, you know, to, to cardiac MRI over the last uh, couple of decades. It's just been very difficult to sort of scale up your, uh, your local operation because it's been so arduous to, to process these exams. So those tools are going to be uh, playing very important roles. You know, Terra Recon, you know, just just last week, yeah, it got FDA approval for their auto segmentation tool for cardiac MRI. So that's very exciting. Uh, we're looking forward to, you know, uh, using that tool a lot more in our practice. The, the point you made about automation and customization and basically how that's created a, a very different workload than compared to just, you know, not too long ago when you were in fellowship. I mean, I guess about a better feel for the array of automation and customization features that that you're using in your workflow. Yeah, I, I mean, automation is very, very important. I mean, as as the demand for these imaging exams increases, you know, we as imagers rely very heavily on any tool that will improve our workflow efficiency, but also ensure that there's no drop off in accuracy. And so that's really what we're looking for, increased efficiency, you know, but ensuring high accuracy um, and uh, no compromise with sensitivity, specificity of the, of the exam. And so, it, you know, automation has played a very important role here. You know, we're using it and now, um, you know, I, it, you know, I mentioned cardiac MRI post-processing, for example, I mean, it's substantially reduced the amount of time it takes an imager to, you know, review a case and report on a case. You know, what used to take me 20 to 30 minutes uh, as a fellow, um, you know, to, to contour the left ventricle for simple EF, um, now could be done in just a matter of seconds using AI and automation. You know, similarly, you know, um, you know, if we wanted to segment out the coronary tree on a cardiac CT exam, uh, it would take probably, you know, maybe an hour, maybe more, two hours to segment out uh, a coronary tree to quantify the different types of plaque and identify vulnerable plaque, you know, within the coronary arteries. That can now be done in, you know, you know minutes, if not seconds, you know, using automation and some of these AI powered algorithms. And so, you know, we're really driving efficiency as, as, as high as we can right now. Ultimately, what's happening is that is reducing, you know, the, it's lowering the turnaround time for reporting these studies. It's increasing patient access to care. And so, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of good for increasing access, you know, ensuring that these patients get, a, you know, a high, high quality diagnostic workup, you know, tied to tailored therapeutics, you know, and more hospitals and more appointment slots. When you think about this advancement that we've made just in the last you know, a handful of years, it gets you really excited about the future. Is there, are there certain technologies that you see as having, driving the greatest evolutions within cardiac imaging? What really excites me the most and, and most of my colleagues, this plaque quantification, you know, the volumetric plaque quantification has really gained a lot of attention. I think that's really exciting stuff. You know, I, I, I envision a future where, you know, volumetric plaque quantification 
will become the calcium score of the future, right? And so we used to really rely on coronary calcium scores to risk stratify patients, you know, for future adverse cardiovascular events, you know, heart attacks, strokes, that sort of thing. We have a lot better data now to work with from a CT angiographic data set. And, and we're learning a lot more about, you know, what types of plaque are really bad and uh, which types of plaque set patients up for adverse events. And so I think capturing that data efficiently, you know, from CT using AI based uh, algorithms is, is really going to be a centerpiece of the future, you know, coronary CT analysis. And so I think, you know, that that really is exciting stuff. I think it's going to be used to guide therapy assess therapeutic efficacy. That's something that we really haven't done a lot uh, in the past with, with cardiac CT, looking at, you know, what can we improve on, on the therapeutic side of things? You know, are we seeing a reduction in uh, bad plaque and, uh, you know, are we making any progress? And so that, that's certainly one area that uh, I'm excited about on the MRI side. I think you know, we're really seeing big efficiency gains. I expect that trend to continue. I, you know, we mentioned these AI powered tools that help expedite the, uh, the post-processing. I think you're also going to see more AI tools devoted to expediting, you know, the image acquisition. You know, you're already starting to see these emerge, you know, what used to be a 45 to 60 minute exam, you know, can now be, you know, reduced to less than 15 minutes. That's huge. You know, that's going to, you know, um, obviously, um, lead to more appointment slots for hospitals and for imaging centers. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you tie the two together, you know, improved, uh, you know, um, uh, lower acquisition time and, uh, you know, in, improved speed with the post-processing, you know, you're going to be able to care for a lot more patients. And so in order to I guess, take advantage of these, uh, forthcoming breakthroughs, the, the imaging leaders of today really have to start today, right? Is there any certain set of uh, advice or recommendations you have to make sure that providers who are watching this can make sure that they're, they're future proof and the stuff that they're doing today will make them prepared for these future breakthroughs? Yeah. I think what's really important is that if a hospital or imaging center or practice, you know, really wants to uh, develop a, a service line for cardiac, for advanced cardiac imaging, CT and or MRI, uh, and is, it, it, you know, wants to be forward thinking, it, it's really important to invest in quality. And, and I, I tell our all, every group that we work with, I emphasize this point, invest in quality, you know, high quality scanners, um, invest in the nursing support that's necessary to run a clean service line, um, invest in an imaging team. A lot of, a lot of, you know, practices and hospitals just don't have the resources to hire full-time imagers. You know, Innovation Health Services is, is a practice that, you know, we augment, you know, boots on the ground. You know, we can fill in the cracks and provide uninterrupted service, you know, 24-7. And so, you know, practices like ours are, are, are trying to, you know, improve, you know, the, the service line operations at, at these sites. Make that investment. You know, having a broken service is only going to lead to problems. Um, and I think having the resources allocated to ensuring high quality is is just paramount. So, and that includes investing in the right tools, right? And so, if you know, we want to ensure that you know there's high accuracy, there's high efficiency. Incorporating some of these tool sets, like you know, Terra Recon. It, it's, it makes a huge difference. I mean, you, you improve your bottom line, you improve your efficiency, you improve your, your patient satisfaction, your physician satisfaction, everyone ends up winning. I mean, it is an investment, but you know, at the end of the day, the economics are favorable and, but more importantly, you know, you're, you're delivering much better patient care and, uh, you know, you're going to be a lot more efficient. Thanks so much. That, I mean, that's really interesting and exciting. Uh, cardiac imaging has been around for a while. But to see all of the breakthroughs that are happening and see kind of this pathway that cardiac imaging groups and teams can follow to make sure they're ready for these breakthroughs that are on the way. Uh, super interesting, super exciting. So thanks so much, Dr. Merlis. For the people who are watching, thank you for joining us. I'm pretty sure you learned a thing or two. Uh, I would say, if anything, you know, if, uh, reach out to Dr. Merlis either through Innovation Health Services or Simon Med, depending on, you know, where you sit in the, uh, in the, the healthcare world, and then also check out the products that he talked about too, including uh, Terra Recon. So thank you very much, and we'll catch you all next time.
Thanks, Jake. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.